Hi guys. So today I want to talk about look back options. So in this lecture we're going to talk about look back options and we're going to look at uh, the partial differential equation for a look back option. So before we get started on that, let's first try to understand what a look back option is. So let me actually plot a graph here. So let's assume on the x axis we have time, on the y axis we basically have the stock price. So let's assume that the stock basically follows this kind of a path. Okay, and finally at time capital T, this is capital T, it ends up at some value ST. Okay, so this basically is ST. Now if, from our discussion on European call options, we know that if this was a European call option, then the payoff of the European call option would be ST minus K. So maximum of ST minus K and zero, where K is our fixed strike price, right? So we fix the strike price, and then depending on how the stock basically ends up, we basically, um, the, the payoff is given by ST minus K, and maximum of ST minus K and zero, right? So as we talked about earlier, uh, European call options are basically not path dependent. So it doesn't really matter what path the stock price basically takes. Um, all it matters is basically what is the um, value of the stock at expiration of the option, okay? Now, look back options are obviously different, um, uh, different from European call options and the main difference is uh, look back option basically is path dependent, okay? And the payoff of a look back option is basically the maximum value that the stock takes um, before expiration. Okay, so we can like uh, we can write down the payoff of a look back option as maximum value that the stock basically takes. Okay, this is the maximum value stock takes between a zero and t. And in case of a fixed strike look back option, the strike price is going to be k. Okay, and we again need to take the maximum of this and zero. Okay, that would give us the payoff of a look back option. Now if you compare these two, this one as I said basically was a payoff of a European call option. It didn't really have any part dependency. Here because we are looking at the payoff and the, and the payoff basically is the maximum value that the stock has taken uh, before expiration. Obviously it depends on the parts that the um, stock takes, right? And here we let's first consider basically a fixed strike look back option. So strike price, let's assume that strike price is basically same between the European and the look back option. In that case, if the strike price is the same and these are the payoffs for a European and a, and a look back option, the look back option would be extremely valuable to the buyer of the option, right? Because, you know, here we basically get the maximum payoff possible. Here, basically the payoff only depends on ST. Here we basically get the payoff um, according to the maximum value that the stock has attained before time t, okay? So between these two, the strike price is the same, then you would expect the premium for the look back option to be much higher than the premium for the European call option, just because here you basically get the best case scenario um, as far as the payoff is concerned, okay? And in order to get this payoff, you obviously cannot be paying the same premium as a European call option you have to pay a much higher premium, okay? So this basically is, is a fixed strike uh, look back option because the strike price is fixed, okay? But today in this lecture, we're gonna actually look at um, floating strike look back option, okay? So the payoff of that is going to be max of ST between zero and T, Okay, so basically we're looking at the maximum value that the stock price is, has attained before time t. And the strike price is going to be a floating strike and it's going to be equal to the value of the stock at expiration. Okay, and because of this formula, this, is, this quantity is always going to be positive, right? It's going to be positive or it's going to be equal to zero, right? It can never be negative, so we don't really need to actually put a plus sign here because we know that this is always going to be greater than or equal to zero, okay? Because this is the maximum value of the stock price is taken 
and this basically is not some um, predetermined uh, uh, strike price this basically is the strike price is basically the value of the stock at time t and this by default is going to be greater than or equal to zero so we don't have to write a plus sign here okay so this basically is the payoff off of floating strike look back option and and we're going to actually discuss in this lecture floating strike look back option okay so let's move forward okay so what we're going to do right now is we're basically going to assume a floating strike look back option on a stock okay and we're going to assume that the stock is modeled as a geometric Brownian motion right so we know um, the geometric Brownian motion can be written as the differential can be written as ds of t is equal to r of st r times st dt plus sigma times st dw tilde of t right this basically is a geometric Brownian motion and we know the solution of this geometric Brownian motion that's given by st equals s0 exponent sigma w tilde t plus r minus half sigma square t right and here what we can do is we can take sigma outside the brackets and we'll get s0 exponent sigma and here it will get w tilde of t plus 1 by sigma r minus half sigma square t okay so all I've done is basically I've taken sigma outside the bracket and inside the bracket then I'll get this now what I can do is I can represent this as alpha okay and if I represent this term as alpha then inside what then what we can do is we can basically denote w hat of t as w tilde of t plus alpha t okay where alpha is given by 1 by sigma r minus half sigma square right so if you represent w tilde t plus alpha t as w hat of t i can substitute this right here so i'll get s of t is equal to s0 exponent sigma w hat of t okay simple manipulation now what I would like to do is I would like to denote the maximum value that um, w hat has taken between 0 and t so I want to represent m hat of t as the maximum value that w hat has taken between time 0 and t okay so this is basically the maximum value w hat has taken between time 0 and t i'm denoting that by <coughs> m hat of t right if this is the uh, if this is the notation that i use for this what would be the maximum value and now i want to uh, uh, figure out what is the maximum value the stock has taken which i'm going to denote by y of t y of t is the maximum value that the stock has taken between 0 and t okay and this is going to be from this equation right here is going to be nothing but s naught times exponent sigma and instead of w hat of t i'm going to write m hat of t which is the maximum value that w hat is taken between 0 and t okay if i put that here that would give me the maximum value that the stock has taken between times 0 and t and that's denoted by y of t okay so this is something to remember right here and this is also something to remember because you're going to use it later okay now what what we want to do is we want to basically figure out the payoff of a payoff of a um, floating uh, strike look back option is given by y of capital T minus s of t right y of capital T we can get from here is nothing but sigma 
M hat of capital T and S of T we can get from here if that's going to be sigma W hat of T. Okay? This is basically the payoff and instead of Y of T basically I've substituted this formula right here and my S of T was given by this, so I've basically written that here, okay? Now we know that how we actually calculate the value of a uh, derivative security before expiration, we basically use a risk neutral pricing formula. And what is the risk neutral pricing formula? e to the power of minus rt v of t. So here we basically assume v of t is basically the value of the look back option at time t. This is gonna be given by expected value under the risk neutral measure of V of capital T. V of capital T is basically the payoff. This payoff right here. And we need to discount that back given information at time t. Okay? So in order to compute the, the, the value of the, the look back option before expiration, we need to use the risk neutral pricing formula, which is given right here. Okay? And we need to, we need to compute this expectation. And this we're going to do it in the next lecture. Uh, in today's lecture, what I want to do is I want to basically look at the differential equation that satisfies the value of the look back option, okay? And we already know how we actually go about computing the, uh, the differential, okay? We basically first need to express this as a function of time and state variables. Okay, then we need to find a martingale. We already know what a martingale is. Okay, then we need to take the differential. When we get, take the differential, we'll get a DT term. Because we are taking differential of a martingale, there should not be a DT term. So we will equate the DT term equals to zero and we'll get our differential equation. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. So let's move on.